Hey, it's Will. I've got a short video here to show you some of the new things in Rack AFX 7. This is the first of a bunch of uh, videos. Some of them are going to be on writing plugins and doing some GUI things. This is just kind of a, an introduction to what's changed since Rack AFX 6. And if you've never used uh, Rack AFX before, this will be a good introduction for you as well. There is a new thing in Rack AFX 7 called the ASPIC export. And you can see a button over here that says Export ASPIC. This will let you remove the core of your plugin and export it as an ASPIC plugin framework uh, core. You can then take that and convert that into AU or VST or AAX. The new thing in Rack AFX 7 is that it does not do that anymore. Uh, it has its own API that it uses internally and it uses ASPIC as its plugin framework export. And ASPIC is a separate product from it. So when you click export ASPIC, it's going to pull that core out, and then you can do whatever you want to with that. So we're going to be talking about the stuff in Rack AFX 7 in this video and the next bunch of videos. And there are other videos I've already done on how ASPIC works, and you can check those out as well. The first thing you can see is that there's a big bank of 80 knobs here. There are ac actually 80 slots, and you can put one of several types of controls in those slots. I'm using this black and white knob as a sort of placeholder, meaning there's nothing assigned here yet. I honestly tried a bunch of different graphics for that, and they all looked equally bland. So I decided to just leave the, the white and black um, knobs here to indicate that for now. So there are 80 of these here. You can put knobs, switches, radio buttons, drop-down menus, VU meters, uh, uh, and more inside of this inside of the slot. So let me go ahead and open a project to show you what that looks like. This is the Wicker Amp Combo Project. This is a part of an addendum I did for chapter 19 of my new audio effects book. It's a tube amp simulator. You can see that it's got a couple of ro rows populated here in the prototyping area. And here is a drop-down menu, and here is a switch. Another drop-down menu. This is a VU meter right here. And there's even several other types of components that you can stash inside of each of these slots. You can arrange them however you like. You know that I provide a bunch of different colors for these uh, knob graphics. So you can make columns of red and blue or yellow or whatever you like on the prototyping panel to sort of separate out your controls and make it look uh, more useful for you. Remember that in Rack AFX, one of the paradigms I use is to do all your prototyping first in this area, get the plugin up and running and debugged, and then go do the GUI design as the second stage. At that point, you'll have a much better idea of what controls you want to expose for the user and that kind of thing. So in the prototyping panel, we're concerned with getting all the controls up that we need to get the plugin debugged and running. Um, if you look at the, the, the bank here, there's 80 of these slots, but there's actually scores more. In fact, there's 1,260 of these slots. And these are called panels. Each bank of 80 is called one panel, and each row is called one row. You can move the panels and rows up and down using these buttons right here. This button will move the panel down by one row. So I've exposed a blank row down here, and the top row fell, off the t fell up off the top. And then I can move down again, expose another blank row. I can get back to the first or the beginning panel here with the center button. I could move down an entire bank of 80 at a time. So now I'm scrolling in batches of 80, get back to the original one again. Uh, there's a preferences item where you can map these arrow buttons to the arrow buttons on your keyboard. And I've got mine mapped so that my up and down arrows do the up and down banks of panels. So I can move in banks as well using my arrow keys, which are off the camera right now. So these uh, buttons here, your arrow keys, will give you access to all of the 1260 controls that you need here. If you need any more than 1260 controls for your plugin, let me know and I'll make you a special version that will have more controls if that's, that's required. Now as long as we're in the center strip here, uh, these three buttons let you choose stereo, left, or right. The original version of Rack AFX didn't have a way to isolate the left and the right channels, which you sometimes need for some kinds of plug-in debugging, so those buttons are there for that. And then up here I've got a cluster of what are the most commonly used buttons from within the command module over here. The command module has several tabs that have a bunch of different options for the various uh, components in Rack AFX, and I pulled out the most commonly used ones and stuck them in this little slot up here. 
Down here, we have a, um, an output window that will give you some information about what's going on inside of Rack AFX. And below that are the input and output meters. Now, this bank of 32 meters used to be in its own uh, little container over here, and there was another tab here for the metering. I found it was cumbersome to have to keep switching to that tab. And when you put a meter in your plug-in prototype, I've got a meter right here in this prototype, it would wind up down in this area of the plug-in uh, of the interface, and it was just too cumbersome to have to move back and forth. So I pulled all that out, and I give you the ability now to put both analog and digital VU meters within these slots. We'll go over that in some future videos as well. Below that is the familiar trackpad joystick, so you can use this as either an XY pad or a Korg-style vector joystick. And then over on the right, we've got the, uh, the command module, which really hasn't changed very much at all. Most of this stuff is the same from Rack AFX 6. So let's go ahead and load this plugin. Here's the plugin loaded, and I'm going to pull up the custom GUI for it, which looks like this. Now remember, this plugin has an ASPIC core. What that means is that an ASPIC plugin core chunk of code is going to handle audio, the audio signal processing and the GUI design. So this entire GUI here is being rendered from within the plugin itself. Rack AFX is not involved anymore in that. In version 6 and before, it was a very difficult operation from my point because Rack AFX 6 uh, required you to link your plugin to a giant library full of GUI components. That's all changed now. Your plugin makes its own GUI. So uh, everything has been like streamlined because of that. And I want to jump in and go look in the GUI designer very briefly here. We'll come back out and look at another GUI designer. But this is the Rack AFX GUI designer. If you've used it before, then you're familiar with how it works. It has a main panel here and an infinite number of off-screen views that you can use to create sub-panels and tab dialogues and all that stuff. The thing that's new in here is that because your plugin no longer links to this big library, you have to import all of the ping files yourself that do all the graphics for the plugin. The good news is this means your plugin is going to be tiny, like K bytes in size instead of scores of megabytes in size. And uh, it also means that you're in control of bringing that information in. One of the things I'm doing in Rack AFX 7, because you have the ASPIC core, and all of this is actually happening in ASPIC and not in Rack AFX, is that you can bring um, ping files in here and embed them directly in the XML file. In fact, that's the standard operation. So with this new paradigm, you no longer have to keep track of resources within your Visual Studio project, meaning importing resources in or, or having a folder that has all the artwork inside it or something like that. You can now just have one central location for all your artwork, bring it in, uh, stuff it into the XML file, and it will stay with that XML file forever as you move the plugin around. So that's a, that's a major change from the last uh, GUI designer. Now let me go back out to the uh, prototyping panel. As long as the plugin's loaded, I'm going to pull up the GUI one more time. Because this is an ASPIC core, and this stuff is actually happening inside of ASPIC and not in Rack AFX, it has its own built-in GUI designer that's part of the ASPIC framework. To access that, you hold the Shift key down and right-click and choose Open UI Description Editor. And this is going to pop up the um, VST GUI 4 GUI designer. And I'm going I'm to use these menu items. I put these in, in here uh, to let you rearrange um, how this looks so that you can get it to, in, in the kind of a, the aspect ratio that you like. Once you've got it all set up, you can save that. And that's all covered in aspect videos, so I'm not really going to worry about that right now. But this is your GUI designer. It's inside of your plugin because that's part of the way that Aspic works. So you have access to this um, secondary GUI designer as well. And you can switch back and forth between the two of them without very much problem at all. So uh, before I let this go, I'll go ahead and play you some stuff through this uh, plugin. When I do plugins like this, let me let me reset this. When I do plugins like this, I like to do um, I like to use very difficult wave files, uh, meaning I like to use guitar files that are very fickle, like Stratocaster and Telecaster loops. And uh, it's easy to get a great sound with a super output humbucker, but if you use these more fickle files, it's a little bit more difficult. So I've got the um, combo set up right here. I'm going to play a strat loop there, and I'm going to slot it through the plug-in now. 
There are two preamps in this, and so I'm going to dial up volume one is the input into the first triode model. Volume two is the drive for all the rest of the triodes in the cascade. So I'm going to set this relatively high, and then I can use this to dial in whatever more crunchy I want. The T compress knob, by the way, is a class B emulator that does tube compression and crossover distortion. Uh, when it's on one, it's pretty linear. On 10, it's very distorted. So I'm going to dial this back to around two and a half or so. Got some reverb. Now I can go super class B crunch with this knob. It also acts as a limiter as well, and you have to read the addendum to understand the how, how the tube, how the class B output stage can act like a tube limiter. Uh, that's about it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and start working on a next another batch that are all going to be uh, tutorials on writing plugins in Racky FX7. So I'll see you in those videos.